thank you and uh, thank you sincere thanks to dr rajiv sir and uh, dr shalini and i acknowledge presence of anil bansali sir also that tied on to our uh, discussion and uh, acvd centric management versus glucose centric i think tejas put up the first slide itself about a clinical case in 2022 he wants to just control the sugars and he doesn't even put the bmi of the patient doesn't even put about the other screening which is important and that is what we are talking about the traditional glucose centric approach what uh, uh, tejas had put up which we used to do it in way back in 2005 6 so the current paradigm in diabetes is glucose centric we know being exclusively categorized by the glycemic characteristics so the glucose centric paradigm views hyperglycemia as the primary target we all know that and that's what is we are debating today which it views hyperglycemia as the only primary target which is driven driven by the resistance to insulin combined with the progressive beta cell failure and it considers the glycemic control its ultimate treatment goal and that's the problem is most importantly the glucose centric paradigm which most of us used to follow it has not considered the non glycemic diseases associated with it that's the basic problem as you can see on the right hand side and that is where we are trying to move towards the from this glucose centric approach to the a70 acvd approach yeah so if you look at this therapeutic advances there is more than 40 new molecules have been you now since 2005 after metformin i think this is where we end up today and look at this slide which is people with diabetes and glycemic control in india this is about only 23% so only one out of four are controlled well and what does it result in it results in all these complications more than 50% of them end up with microvascular more than 25% macrovascular and about 25% with dkd and despite available all these numerous so this is my one slide which will summarize literally my approach or my argument that only glucose centric is not going to be enough because managing diabetes is now is targeting the basic pathophysiology of diabetes not only the glucose centric it has to preserve the beta cells of course with reductions of a1c's and fgpp but it doesn't end there that only pump one quarter of this pie minimal risk of hypoglycemia meaningful weight reduction proven cv efficacy and this is where the renal or hepatic impairment with all the every time i said that only i have to put the effort so this is where we are ending today that is why it is not only the glucose centric approach what is required but you require a 360 degree care with a cardio metabolic approach and that is why i said dr tejas showed us the case with only the fps ppbs and a1c and his age and never talked about the cardio metabolic risk which we need to evaluate at baseline so that we prevent it the complication at the end of the day whether it's glucose centric or the cardio metabolic approach or the acvd approach what we are trying to do our essential goal is to prevent complications so this is the multiple pathophysiological defects what have been identified and the various class of drugs and that is where the glucose centric approach is now is void and null because we need to choose the right drug at the beginning so that you prevent complications and that is where the problem is with only the glucose centric approach because you don't categorize risk stratification and this is by the statement by dr d franzo himself way back in 2009 he said multiple drugs used in combination will be required to correct the multiple pathophysiological defects treatment should be based upon reversal of known pathogenic abnormalities and not simply and reducing the a1c so this is the message from the big boss itself so the therapy must be started early to prevent or slow the progressive beta cell failure that already is well established so paradigm shift in treatment is recommended and this is what we are talking today about instead of targeting only the glucose center because see even today the way back the euglucan tablet which used to be used is a very potent glucose lowering agent but we almost stopped this except in certain places in the government sectors except there we never use these molecules now if you remember clibinclamide and this is where we have moved on to sglt2 and zlp ones now why is that because we are not targeting only the glucose centric approach we are targeting the cardio metabolic approach so the person centered outcome driven treatment is the key and this comprehensive and multifactorial treatment approach which has to start in the beginning of diagnosis it widens to address the continued cardiovascular risk continuum and the latest guidelines either it's ada esd eac all these 
guidelines and hyperglycemia management recommend an approach that respond, represents a paradigm shift in the management of diabetes and this traditional glucocentric strategy has given way to a more expansive approach which seeks to tailor the pharmacotherapeutic regimens which are uh, individualizing so this is just what they just also showed the expenditure because it's out of pocket market in the country so i'll skip that slide look at this indian study the cost increases with comorbidities and complications so if you don't diagnose the comorbidities and if you don't have the cardiometabolic approach initially and this is where you end up with our patients where the total cost because of the complications will add on to the patient and of course the cardiovascular diseases we know this is the prevalence which is huge in our country i don't think this august gathering requires any definitions of this so we'll skip this but this is where we end up and look at the numbers they are the number one cause of death globally the cvds and about 31% of all global deaths are attributable to this and of these 85% are due to mi and stroke and cvd is expected to account for more than 22 million deaths and this is where the cardiometabolic risk is highest and that is what we need to prevent as a primary prevention when you diagnose a patient we know that definitely there is a interplay between your diabetes and cardiovascular diseases these are the again the basic pathophysiological omnes octet what we talk about and of course we need to target these multiple mechanisms whenever you diagnose for the first time you don't just only look at the hyperglycemia but you need to look at these basic pathophysiological defects to various molecules how do you choose you don't just choose a sulfonylurea just to bring down because glibin chloride is the most potent uh, uh, agent which can bring down your sugars but that is not what we are going to choose today in 2022 so that is where it is very important to tackle various molecules at various stages and of course the cardiovascular disease continuum we know and this is the current standard of care which can reduce cater and bring down the risk of any diabetic patients there has to be glycemic control along with the management of dyslipidemia blood pressure platelet inhibition and lifestyle modification so it is a multifactorial 360 degree cardiometabolic approach which has to be done at 2022 not the glucocentric approach and again this is a publication which i am showing you look at the the second point the treatment should be based on known pathogenic abnormalities not simply on reduction of vitamin c and this therapy has to be started early in the natural history of diabetes to prevent progression of beta cell failure essentially eat early eat hard and that is what we need to look at the patient as a holistic approach this is a very important slide because just a lifestyle intervention associated with a reduced cvd mortality and that's what i want to show which most of us do not uh, emphasize to our patients about lifestyle modification we'll only talk about drugs but definitely this is also a therapy which most of us fail to impart to our patients in our busy routine clinical practice so insulin intensification outcomes in long duration studies and this is what tejas was also talking about acard pdt and vdtf and this analysis of acard indicated intensive glucose lowering could also increase the cv mortality He rightly pointed out that i'm going to talk about this let us dissect these studies and see this is the study design and look at the median a1c at each study visits and the outcome the standard therapy and death from any cause literally the increased all cause mortality was seen in the intensive glycemic curve probably it was attributed to hypoglycemia but it did not significantly reduce the major cv events and that's what i want to emphasize not about the all cause mortality in the intensive arm probably due to severe hypoglycemia so it did not reduce the major cardiovascular events and vidt veterans affairs diabetes trial again change in the median a1c primary outcome time to first major cv event you can see no improvement was seen in the rate of overall survival rates these are the cvots available for all the molecules we know that and of course and the effect of sglt2s dpp4s and glp1s we are very well discussed but the sulfonylureas are very potent uh, uh, reductions in the a1c but we don't use much now because of these disadvantages which the mace or cv death effects are not there and in, in fact in some of the studies they showed all cause mortality has been increased so in creatine based the glp1s we know and we'll skip this Uh, which definitely acts at a pathogenic levels that is the omnes actite and that is where we need to look at so effect of glp ones to reduce hypertension dyslipidemia glucose and of course obesity and that is what we look at the pleiotropic benefits of various drugs so the cardiometabolic risk summed up these are all the various randomized controlled trials which are supported to these molecules the liraglutide had a uh, leader trial semaglutide had sustain 6 which was one of the earliest where the three point maze if you look at all these rcts on the top you can see the the num- years at which these were published albuglutide i was all part of all these trials including armenia i was a part of it 
and 2019 dula glutate i was not part of dula glutate study but rewind again showed all this i'll, I'll show you the gist of this oral sema pinor 6 also i was part of and this is the sustain 6 and leader and harmony rewind pinor if you look at all this forest plot it is towards the left when it comes to the maze events because i showed you the burden of cv that's secondary to diabetics and that is where we need to interfere at day 1 instead of only looking at the glucocentric approach and this is the exenadin based uh, uh, the elix and excel studies and i was part of both these elix and excel again and they showed either neutrality or no positive uh, negative effect on the cv outcomes these are all the proposed mechanisms because we know now we need to tackle including the inflammation the pro inflammatory uh, markers are more especially in indians and that is where we need to look at the molecules which talks about reduction in the inflammation increase in the plaque stability and prevent progression of atherosclerotic plaque so the chain of events which originates from the cv risk factors as a primary prevention we need to look at and all these uh, the cardiovascular continuum what we call has to be choose and the right molecule to reverse this and in a nutshell the glp ones can take care about blood pressure inflammation weight and even lipid levels and of course reduce the risk of cv uh, outcomes and the therapy is associated with the lower incidences of severe hypoglycemia is again an important factor and it can modify interfere as a primary prevention level to the progression of atherosclerotic vascular diseases and this is what the set of molecules the class of molecules which has changed our approach to the treatment and that is where all the guidelines have changed following the cvot trials and look at this declared mt cause which is of course uh, does not increase the cv outcomes of dpp4 the the sglt2s empareg canvas and of course they now should be considered in all patients with diabetes and elevated risk of cardiovascular disease even in the absence of established disease with only the risk factors they have been chosen and this is another paper which talks about that they work better the dpp4 and sglt2 in the asian ethnicity and that is again important for us as indians because they have all become cost effectiveness and the age old metformin which is discovered in 1957 approved by fda only in 1994 definitely has got a positive role in the cvd and i am a strong proponent to use metformin in most of our patients i think 99% of our patients should be there these are all small studies but definitely there is a positive effect on the cv uh, uh, morbidity and mortality with metformin all, always and the other comorbid prescriptions the the co prescriptions would be the aspirin atorvastatin <laughs> ramipril in and such patients with a high risk of uh, uh, cardiovascular diseases so conventionally the stepped up therapy which was used like say you can see there ada 2015 and then 2017 and is 2017 look at the changes and remember all these guidelines are based on the meta analysis or the rcts which has got highest statistical significance and they have been changing for period of time and this is where you see from 2016 onwards you can see there stages is still in 2015 with the glycemic control alone after that the glycemic control definitely will be there but you see the additions and how it has evolved the paradigm shift and that is what we have been talking about they definitely recommend a cardio metabolic approach and essentially we follow guidelines it is a guideline of course it's not that every patient has to be done like this but the guidelines strongly recommend the cardio metabolic approach in diabetics and pda 22 uh, 2020 which talks about the dpp4 sglt2 i think they just also showed this so we will not get into that but what is important is the consensus which talks about the first line therapy depends on the comorbidities patient centered treatment factors including cost and access considerations and management needs and generally include metformin and comprehensive lifestyle modification this is where we need to stratify the risk stratification of each patient when they come in not only the even c and then assess and accordingly you proceed further and that's where it's most important so in established acvd we know glp1 sglt2 and then the evidence on the right side i'm showing the hierarchy as why is the evidence based all these are evidence based rct is based and that is where is most important including our own rssdi you can see sglt2 uh, established cvd all these are included in our own guidelines as well and look at this acc decision path which is very practical i felt patients above 18 years diabetes and established clinical acvd no that was the the dr tejas case insufficient evidence to recommend sglt2 or glp1 for acvd risk reduction and you need to do this and without this you cannot proceed further if yes esrd or ongoing pregnancy or currently breastfeeding the absolute contraindications if there is no then consider sglt2 glp1 and we'll proceed further and that's what we need to do today so it's time for action to address this omnisacted not the glucocentric approach again i'm ending my uh, uh, 
uh, humble submission that the glucocentric approach is not enough this is what we should look at in a holistic manner the 360 degree care which is very very important in this era of 2022 that the cardio metabolic approach will only prevent and the again the uh, the franzos statement a paradigm shift in treatment is recommended because the treatment should be based upon reversal of known pathogenic abnormalities and not simply on reducing evc thank you very much sir